Okay, I don't have notes for this stuff, so I'll just throw out, because Harry brought in some cool stuff, so I'm going to share what Harry brought in. So, have you seen the acrylic point drills? Oh, yeah. With the zero rake angle. Oh, yeah. It didn't make it past Harry. <laughs> what else do you have here? Just different uh, angles of different kind of bits. Nice. Masonry bit. Masonry bit. Yeah. Well, come on, look at that. I'm not going to pass all that around. Standard, Standard bit. bit. Standard yeah. bit. Okay. Uh, Forstner bits. These are really cool uh, when you're working on wood. And in aviation, I worked on a lot of wood stuff. We use Forstner bits for drilling into wood spars and, and making holes in those. Uh, this would be the cheaper version of a wood, wood drill. So we use the Forstner bit. I have the Milwaukee's. And well, that's the, uh, oh, the pin vise for the load. Oh, pin vise. Okay. Because those little bits, I was surprised, like the number 80 is how small they are. Step it. For those of you who never even knew your real bit, uh, <laughs> sometimes called a step drill, unibit. These are a must have in aviation. If you're trying to punch a half inch hole in a piece of 032 with a drill bit, you're asking for trouble. So these things will put a nice, perfect hole wherever you want to go. So can't really back them up, though. That's the only bad thing. So you got to be careful. But you go in, you go in. Yeah. So. Now you carry a sharpie and then you just mark on a sharpie where you want to stop and uh, just go until they get there. Get there. These are cool. It's a fly cutter. But they're not really used for cutting flies. So, for cutting circles. So, instrument panel holes, bigger holes. Can you turn the diameter on that just to cover your circumference? Yeah. So, you just undo it here and slide it in and out. And you would think that it would be like really out of balance, but they're not really. They're kind of cool. They look good. So, all right. Oh, and then my favorite. Got to have some of these because they're flexible. Long bendy. Long bendy. So you can go around the corner a little bit. All right. Let's talk about safety wire, I think. Let's see, because I think we did everything I wanted to talk about. Oh, we did that. We have the different type of shanks. We have the taper shank, because I ask everybody, what kind of shank is that? It's taper. Taper. Um, yeah, notice this, draw notice this drawing here is correct. The chisel edge angle, it actually goes off of the chisel edge and around. Some of your books have some other weirdness right there. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. This one is actually acceptable and good. Uh, geometry, we already covered that. Shank, body, helix angle. Uh, by the way, I was looking at my notes and the, the more twists you have per inch, the um, weaker the drill bit is. It's the straight, the straight flutes are strongest. And we covered all that. Yeah, right there. Lip clearance angle. Yeah, what the? No. <laughs> uh, taper shank, um, square shank, straight shanks. We covered all that. Safety wire. All right, so I think most of you have already experienced the safety wire. Well, some of you did 309 online, right? Yeah. But if you would have done it here in person, you would have already done safety wire. It's one of the projects that we take care of. And so then when you get into this class and you're just pretty much done, you just got to just do it real quick. Safety wire. And I'll be happy to give as many demos as you'd like on safety wire. So if you're doing it, you need some help, just kind of, hey, can you show me how to do this real quick? Be happy to do it. So the go-to everyday safety wire is stainless steel. Um, stainless steel wire comes in many sizes. More sizes than I'll cover, but these are the most common. So we have O2O. And that is 
used on items with a hole diameter so item with a hole diameter that would be the hole in the head basically um, of 0 0.045 to 0 0.062 with spacing less than two inches apart. All right, so what does that really mean? I'm working on my airplane and I got to safety something, so I got to pull out some safety wire and I'm looking at those screws and I got to decide well, what am I going to use? Am I going to use O2O or not? Well, I'm not going to get out a ruler and go, well, let's see. I'm going to get an inside micrometer there and try and figure out, and, you know, is that a drill bit? Is it 045, 062? What's going to be good? What's going to be bad? No. In general, if they're small screws, less than two inches apart, I'm going to use O2O. Small screws, less than two inches apart. Small stuff. Anything other than that, I'm going to go up a size. So 0 0.032, which is the most common. When in doubt, you can almost always go 032, and you'll probably be OK. This is right out of 4313 hole diameter larger than 0 0.045 and no that is not a misprint because notice O2O is items with hole diameter 0.045 to 062 and this is hole diameter larger than 045 well wait a minute isn't 062 larger than 045 so anyway that's 4313 so when am I going to use 032? Well, if they're not small screws that are less than two inches apart, 032. and it's not a propeller, 032. I'm going 032. So small screws, less than two inches apart, 020. The propeller, 040, 041. Everything in the middle, 032. Yeah. So for 020, wouldn't you use that for cannon flips as well? Or you don't talk about cannon flips? I wasn't reading it's whatever works. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, but usually when you use OTO, you keep some brakes with cannon plus holes. That's a good point to bring up. And I've seen a so, you know, being working on engines, especially um, the not the dipstick, but it is a dipstick. We call it oil level gauge. Um, especially on light comings, they have a very long pipe for the oil level gauge and they're usually plastic. And, or they're just lightweight aluminum and they're screwed into the case and then they have a little ring down at the bottom where you put the safety wire through. And inevitably, when everybody wants to take the safety wire, they don't cut it real nice. They just grab it and yank it and break out all the holes. And there's no fix for that. It's like, wait, you can buy a whole new tube. You know, these things are not cheap just because you grab safety wire. So when you're working on safety, or when you're working around safety wire, you have to be careful of what you're doing and not actually break things. So that's a good point, like cannon plugs. Those are electrical plugs that you actually plug and twist and have a little hole on it. You can safety it so it doesn't come unplugged. So use your head and think about what you're doing. Um, yeah, you'd break it for sure if you tried to use 041. Why would you? Um, 032 does seem like overkill, so something like that would be great. Yeah, 020. Are you also like the material you're using or your safety wire? Yeah, if it's a small, small, delicate part, I'm definitely going to use some small, delicate safety wire. I'm not coming apart on my watch, man. I'm using the big stuff. All right, I'm going to say 040 slash 0 0.041. And there is a difference between the two, and I forget which. So, like, one propeller company, like Macaulay, says, oh, you should use 040, and the other one, Hartzell, says 041 or switch it. Maybe I have them backwards. I don't remember which one is which. The point is, in my toolbox, I only have three sizes of safety wire. Those three sizes would be 020, 032, 041. Because if the propeller manufacturer said, use the 041 or larger, or 040 or larger, well, I'm good there. Nobody's going to come back and go, use safety wire is too small. So, um, so but typically, typically used on props. I don't really know where else you use that fat safety wire. I can't think of anything. It's not fun to work with. 
some people swear that 040 is way easier than 041. I don't know, because I guess I always get 041, I don't know. Uh, okay, there's also lightweight, lightweight um, aluminum and copper. Copper wire, this is really lightweight stuff. Um, it is only used on emergency equipment where the wire must be broken by hand. So if you have some sort of switch or safety gear, like a fire extinguisher, it should have the pin safety. <laughs> Would I want to safety that pin in there with 040? Yeah. <laughs> You're the one that has to pay to have it serviced. Maybe, I don't know. So. Only used for emergency equipment. Where the wire must be broken by hand. Where the wire must be broken by hand. Um, it is not twisted. It is not twisted. Don't make it stronger than it already is. By the way, I got back from my trip and my oxygen bottle was uh, empty. Speaking of safety equipment and whatnot. And, and on every oxygen bottle, and you'll see this, it says right on it, right on the gauge. Oops. It says that in every piece of oxygen equipment. They did not appreciate my joke. They went to put the regulator on. I said, whoa, you're supposed to use that special oil. Because I don't think you're supposed to use oil on this stuff. So it, does. it says right there, N-O oil. I don't know. I've, I've been trying to search the internet for days. I can't find any N-O oil. N -O oil. I, I said, That's a joke, dude. It says no oil. I didn't think that was funny. No. Uh, OK. So don't twist it. So let's see. Three, how to safety. How to safety. It's easier to show you than it is to tell you about it, but there are some rules that we must follow. So we shall cover the rules. And then, like I said, I can show you in class all the time. So I thought I made a video. I forget. You have a video. I do? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yay. I think Katie did it for me. OK, safety wire is twisted. Where is this video? Did I post it to the canvas? It's on your, uh, YouTube. Okay. Safety wire is twisted at a rate 68. of 68 twists per inch. <laughs> twists per inch. A, a single strand can be used in some cases. Like with a row of screws that are close together. How would I know if what I'm doing meets the criteria for a single strand? Where would I go look? Okay, what I've noticed a lot of you do is you just kind of go, I wonder if I can. Is it okay if I use a single strand on this? <laughs> you guys asking people in the class. So look it up. Find the answer. If you don't know, hey, Kevin, I want to know. Where could I find the answer? I'll tell you. I'm really good about that. You know, if you're curious, I will direct you to the right book. I want you to get used to using the books. It makes me cry a little bit on the inside when I see you struggling and then you just ask the person next to you because you have no idea. And I'm thinking, I don't know how that's going to go for you in your real life when you get out and you're in the field and you're supposed to know all this stuff and you don't know where to look it up and you have to ask somebody and they're going to get tired of answering your questions and just ask you to leave. So learn to look it up. It's not hard. Uh, single strand. Okay, where do we use these single strands? Uh, smaller screws. Smaller screws and bolts and bolts, B O L T S, close together, close together that are hard to reach. One of the very few places where they actually care if it's hard to get to. 
Uh, if you're going to do that, use the largest wire the hole will allow. Use the largest um, size wire, size wire the hole will allow. Yeah, but usually these smaller screws and stuff, they're not going to handle it very well. I'd probably more go 032, but there's the rule. If it's a bolt, for sure, I try to go 041. If it's a string of them, I'm going to have to do it with a single. Sometimes you'll see that. Like an inspection plate or something or a cover that's like very large. Uh, it could be over a fuel tank or something where you have a lot of screws going around. Um, you don't want to, you know, these two, then these two, then these two. I mean, and if, it, if the book allows it, you can just do one strand all the way around and wrap it here, do it. Uh, sometimes it's a thing that has to be taken off every year and put back on, then you really want to do it that way. Um, and then that is screws less than two inches apart. I've seen that a couple times. All right, so safety. I'm not a big fan of safetying too many things together. So two or three items together. Whenever possible, I try and stick it to just two. Um, the max number, max number of items, items um, that you can safety together. So max number of items is what you can do with a piece of wire no longer wire no longer and 24 inches two feet now i did not say that you should pull two feet of wire out of the can every time you do this i'm looking at some of you you've got enough wire to go around your table a couple times and, That'll do it. You got bolts about that far apart. You know, cut that. Oh, throw that away. <laughs> hey, don't do that. Um, let's see. Make sure that you loop the wire around bolt heads. Around the bolt head. Head. Not over doesn't go over the bolt head, it goes around the bolt head. Um, but if it, I don't have that written down here, but if it's a castellated nut, it goes over a castellated nut, not around a castellated nut, because castellated nuts are rounded and it'll never do it. So, yes? Well, what about the castellated nut that I had where the, it actually came up like Well, I showed you. you still, you're you still going castle over, castle but you kind of around the... Yeah. So, uh, uh, wire should pull, should, wire should pull. The nut or bolt tight, nut or bolt tight. That is a positive pull. So we have, I'll let you catch up. Three types of pulls. They are positive, positive, positive neutral, neutral, and negative. negative. <coughs> so which one is preferred? Is, which one is unacceptable? Negative. Which one is better than good? Neutral. You're like, what? Better, better than good. Better than, you know, good enough. Good. <laughs> Sorry, which, is, is neutral okay? Yeah. If that's the best you can do. Now, that is a joke that my wife and I have. I thought I've said it around here many times. It is better than good. It's good enough. <laughs> All right, uh, so three types, this was I, three, three, I'll say three types of poles. We had positive, it pulls tight, uh, neutral, has no pull, neither tight nor loose, and negative. And in neutral, so you got one pull and then 
Like yeah, if it was a, a group of three. <coughs> Looks like it was curving and then the hole was like straight on the up, straight to the Yeah, other. that's neutral. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Negative uh, pulls. Pulls loose. Not good. All right. You can try this. Do not over twist. And then untwist. It is just so obvious. So if you go too far, you can't undo it. And I'll find it. And by the way, that's how I'm grading you on your safety wire. Is you should be able to look at your safety wire and know what is airworthy or not airworthy. So when you bring it to me and say, is this good enough? And I see that it's not airworthy, it says that you have don't have the capability to inspect safety wire and determine if it's airworthy or not. So that's a negative grade. Now, if you ask me, okay, I'm having, I'm struggling with this one. How should I run this? Which way should it go? That's, that's not a problem. But like I said, when you bring it to me constantly to check it, how does this look? And I can see you twisted it, then untwisted it. I'm like, well, you know, you should have known that. Um, so, but I guess if you brought it to me and you said, look, I really, really suck at safety wire. Let me show you why I suck and what everything about this I hate. This is too loose. This has got that problem. Ah, we might have something to talk about. I might be okay with that. Nobody's ever done it, but I'm like, wow. Okay, you just lack skills, but you definitely got it up here. So maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> Do not adjust. Adjust bolt torque. To make the length work, or to make the uh, wire tight, make the wire tight. Um, when you get into torquing, I know it's actually a, a, not a bad question. Um, no, you really can't because you just can't because then you have you have a, a start and stop torque, and it's just kind of not good. What if you do it like you do when you have a cotter pin? You kind of have that window. Yeah, I know. Suppose you could, then. I know one guy. This is terrible. Um, the worst safety wire job in the in the world are these um, Hartzell propellers, because the way the Hartzell propeller is, um, they have a stud, and then they put a castellated. So they have to run the stud into the prop, then they put a castellated nut on it, and then they run a roll pin through that, so it now makes a bolt. And you have to use the inside of that roll pin with 040 and get through there and safety it. And it's hidden and fish it around back. And then you come out. It's, it's nearly impossible. Um, it's very, very difficult. And so I had mentioned it to one mechanic. goes, oh, I got, a, I got a solution for that. I'm like, really? What do you do? He says, well, you torque it. Then you take a Sharpie and you kind of mark where the bolt's lined up. Then you just loosen it up and you run the safety wire and just run it back to where the Sharpie mark's lined up. <laughs> no, no, that is... I guess it's okay because it's not like a real critical component that you're working on. <laughs> I mean, a lot of airplanes have two. So, yeah. So, um, kind of piggyback, if you're using the bolt with a castle nut and you torque it down and then in order to put it on there, right, so the wires go through and it yeah. only gives you a negative, would you just like, unscrew it completely and just shift it to where the holes would be? Or how would you do that without... Okay, well... So if you have a castellated nut, you're, you're most, if it's a bolt and a castellated nut, you rarely use safety wire. You're almost always using a cotter pin. So that's a whole other thing. If it's a stud, and a stud is, is like a bolt with no head on it, it's, it's put into a piece of metal, and you, know, you can't see the backside, and you put a castellated nut and then a cotter pin in it, you simply made a bolt. So the whole castle nut cotter pin will all unscrew the whole thing and be like, hey, look at that. So you have to use safety wire. So no, because the stud was already in there, the stud shouldn't be moving, so you're stuck with what you got. Okay. Yeah. So for the P3 that we got, yeah. on the propeller, and then it has like a little hole, so you have a nut in there, and then like a little, little hole right next to it, to like safety wire. Oh, yeah. And uh, so that is a pain in <laughs> to put safety wire because you got like this much room to safety wire 
get in there. Got to toy for the gifts you can. It's so weird. It's there are things where you're like, I don't really know. You can't do it with plants. I've been, I've been stuck safety wiring stuff where you, you kind of look at it, you go, okay, I see what I'm supposed to do. Then you cut your safety wire and you're kind of like this and you feel it, you get it and you twist it with your fingers and you pull it and, and then you get out and use your flashlight like, oh, that looks terrible. And you know, it's like, it's, you know, you just, you get done. You're like, okay, I, please don't judge me on this, but you know, that was horrible, but it's the, it's the best you can do. Uh, okay. To make it tight. Let me see. Um, if you are using castellated nuts, so castellated nuts, nuts should be torqued. To the lowest setting, to the lowest setting. And then increase towards the max until the holes lined up. The lowest setting and increased. Yeah, if it doesn't, then um, increased towards the max. Toward the max torque until the holes line up. Holes line up. Uh, if holes do not line up, if holes do not line up, which is not usually the case with safety wire, only with cotter pins, um, line up, use a different Use a different nut or washer or add a washer or do something like that. All right, wires should be tight with no slack. If I can come up to your project and grab the wire and slip it over the bolt head, well, that was not tight. See, cut the end of the wire, which is the pigtail, cut end of wire, which is the pigtail, with enough, um, enough, let's see, left to loop around, loop around to prevent a hazard. Don't leave those pigtails sticking up somewhere where it's just a syringe needle waiting to grab somebody. They suck too because you'll find, I mean, you learn how to, you, people do it and you'll reach into an engine compartment and it's that way and now you're not getting back out. So that's the same thing with nylon ties. Oh, man. If you're not using a flush cut, I have a special flush cut cutters in my toolbox specifically for those and if I see somebody leaving zip ties with jagged edges yeah the zip the zip 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 and a snip they are never reuse safety wire unless you anneal it that's a joke because you're not going to do that. Um, this is more of a, a, a me thing. This is not something I should have like a code for that. Like Kevin says, um, when, yeah, when you, yeah, what would K, what WWKD, there you go. What would Kevin do? Uh, when using, um, inside engines, Only hand twist. What? Right there? 
Yeah, when using inside engine, E-N-G, well, I don't even know what the hell it says. I know what I was supposed to write. <laughs> a motor, it's an engine. Only hand twist, leave no tool marks. So in other words, when I was actually safety wiring anything inside of an engine, it was 100% by hand. Everything that was left in the engine was 100% untouched by any sort of pliers. Nowhere along the length of that wire was a plier, cutter, anything ever touched it because it puts those stress risers in there. And not that it's a, it happens a lot, but you know, if you're outside of an engine and you, you know, a cannon plug or some screws or some bolts and the safety wire happened to break, the chances I think of the bolt coming undone is probably not that great. I mean, could be. When you, when you look at the stuff that's safety wired on an engine, like on my airplane, you know, the wing bolt, safety, no. Uh, struts, no. Um, you know, um, the carburetor, no. Magnetos, no. Uh, you know, it's just everything that's this critical component, no. So what is safety? Well, the prop is, and the brake calipers are, and, uh, I don't, oh, and, the, and the oil filter. So, you know, why, why they pick those things, I don't know, but there you are. So, um, with the exception of the oil filter, I'm not worried about anything else coming undone. Well, the, why an oil filter come, would come undone on an aircraft, and you know, there's what, 100,000 cars on the road right now with, un, God help us all, unsafety oil filters that don't seem to come off um, when they're put on correctly. I know, I can't hardly get them off. So anyway, um, yeah, but inside of an engine, it's not so much the fear that the safety wire will break and then the component will come loose, although that is a concern. It's the fear that the safety wire is not gonna get sucked up or get in somehow the oil pump and damage the oil pump. Um, or if it does come undone, it breaks, you'll never know it. You just won't know, unless you find it in the oil filter, the oil screen, you're like, oh crap, where did this come from? Um, let's see. Yeah, and then uh, outside the engines, I don't care, use safety wire pliers all you want. It used to be a kind of a, it was a it was a hard rule a hard rule that you did not use safety wire pliers at the school, and uh, I was kind of under the impression since I teach first year that that was sort of a first year thing, and then in second year everybody was using safety wire pliers until somebody pointed out the fact that they got out in the field and never used a safety wire plier and looked like a fool. So my strong suggestion to you is, and what we should have done is when you do your safety wire project do it by hand, get it signed off, and then before you turn it in, do a couple with safety wire pliers. Get familiar with them, learn to use them right then and there. You know, and then you come and just ask me, it's, it's no stakes, just, hey, I did these with safety wire pliers, what do you think, you know? That would be the smart thing to do. Very smart. Now, this is the fun part. This is Video. No. No, you get to listen to me. Well, this isn't the fun part, but anyway, where does this where does this come from? AC yeah, I keep saying it over and over. If you want to know how to do something, there you go. Notice that when you do three items, you could break it at any point. If I broke it right here, I'm still left with a positive here. If I break it here, I'm left with a positive over here. So it's always positive. Also notice that the wire is not touching other wires. It is comes out at different places. Some of you, I don't know how you do this, but it's like... You will have it come in and then out in the same spot. I'm like, I don't even know how you did that. I know. I was like, what the heck? Yes, you did. There we go. Small screws, less than how many inches apart? Two. Two. Yeah. What about that last picture you had uh, in the bottom right corner? Four? Yeah, four. Single wire. It's a single wire. Single wire, less than two inches apart. You can do up to how many inches? Two. Uh, 24 inches of safety wire. All right, um, just some examples of how this stuff's done. Let's see. Castle nuts, this is a picture is wrong. Castle nut, it goes over, over the top. You'll never accomplish this. It'll keep slipping off over and over. All right. Okay, now the fun part. You can dim the lights so, so you guys can all see this for real. All right, yeah, I kind of shared this at 309. So most of this you guys have seen before. This may not even, I may have more in 309. I don't know. All right, so what's wrong with this one? Okay, different question. Is there anything acceptable about this? No. Yeah, it's a good looking 
Yeah. What's right there? Yeah. Uh, Untwisted. What, you think I can't see that? Okay. What about one, two, three, pigtails? What do, what do you even call this right here? This is kind of a... I wish I had a name for this. Torsional gap. Torsional gap? It's like you, some sort of, I don't know, water ski bradle or something. It's like each side of the boat here. No, it's got to come out of one hole or the other, preferably over here, because if it came out of here, it would be negative. So that should have came out over here. I think the same thing happened here, because here's the hole over here. It comes around. So you just kind of catch it in the middle there. Yeah, sure, why not? So... Hopefully, when I, I'm laughing at these things, you guys are actually seeing that, oh, yeah, I see that. Look, the safety wire is not at the hole here. It's back over here somewhere. Yeah. yeah. No, thanks. Did you just accidentally come across oh, that? Yeah. Like, holy shit, that's... No, I stole a lot of these from the internet. Oh, okay. okay. This is a banjo fitting. I don't know. How about 68 twist per inch? <laughs> you think this is tight? Yeah, first, again, I, I need a name for this. It's uh, somebody's got to help me out. What do we call it when you do that? Oh, they stethoscoped it. Yeah, there we go. So we're in a stethoscope here right now. Just because of once, yeah. So no, that's not going to work. And and you got a pigtail here waiting to kill somebody. <laughs> so this particular bolt right that goes in here it is a drilled head bolt that is supposed to be safety wired but i think the biggest crime is that right there not to mention this will slide down so yeah. Yeah. Well, you could put it right around here at this spot where it's actually touching down here. You know, that's just going to slide down anyway, and you don't need to, I don't know. The FAR 4313, or the AC 4313 says wrap it four times. No, it doesn't say that. <laughs> Nice Z I think I got, well, that's not exactly tight, but it is at least pulling this one. You know, that's going to the right. But then it came out of here, over the top, over here. See, let me see. What is it? That's loosening it. You, you've got to work hard to get something that, that bad. Let's see. This is just my favorite. <laughs> I, to this day, I cannot figure, one of my students did that for me. I do not understand how it works because you need three pieces. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't even see it. It's like one here and then two down. And I'm, I still don't understand how that happened. Unless we somehow got it down, got it back through, and then wrapped it I don't know. That was probably a joke. But. I hope it was. If you have to do maintenance on something and you have to remove the nut often, if you just safety the safety wire to its own nut, then you don't have to cut the safety wire every time that you want to. <laughs> That's right. Okay, it should have went to this hole right there. Yes, it is safety wired. Let's see. I don't know. It's just you can just tell. A little squiggly. Let me see. Uh, I think we looked at that one. Mm -hmm. That's just, you know. What? Oh, so, wait a minute. It just twisted. That was extra. Hang on. We got, let's get rid of this one because we've already seen that. And let's see. What if we rotate this one? And made it bigger. So we can really enjoy this one. All right. So. We have this this beauty right here, this untwisted mess. That is not the worst sin on this page. The fact that that's a bolt hole is. <laughs> so you're going to have to have a grooved bolt in order for this to work. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
left. That one's right. What? So that one, yeah, that one's. Uh, that one's going loose. Um, this one is actually pulling it loose too. That nut is jammed up that way. Let's see. Yeah, I had to write that because I forgot. Nice safety. Too bad about the electrical wire. It's pinched underneath here. <laughs> Your pigtail, okay, here's the pigtail. <laughs> They're just trying to show you the relief range. Got a nice looking, stethos <laughs> nice looking stethoscope over here, and then you got this over here, and then that's just, don't do that. Oh, good, my favorite. Of all the pictures I took, or stole from the internet, this one I took. This was not even, I don't think, a 309 student. This was submitted to me for a grade. And I said, oh my gosh, wait a minute. I have to take a picture of this. And the student was very proud for a few minutes until I said, that's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm telling you, don't be this. A student literally came to me and said, is this acceptable? How did I do? Can I move on? Uh, he kind of figured it out on his own. So at least... At least this one is sort of positive. So it comes up, you know, comes up here, and then it, you know, out of the same hole, you got a negative. Comes over here. Well, at least it's kind of pulling positive. But again, it's out of the same hole. You can't do that. And then it comes over to here, which is positive. And this is too loose. It comes over to here. And it's like, ugh, and that's going to bite me. So why one, two, three, four, five? Some of you guys are trying to get fancy. Like, don't. Don't be fancy. It should look good and professional. I, I, I will never come to you and go, well, why didn't you do three in a row? I don't care. Don't do two if you want. It doesn't matter to me one bit. Somehow he managed to get us to wrap around the castle. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so if, nice lock wire, be a shame if something happened to it. Um, yeah. I just steal stuff from the internet. I'm not ashamed. So if you bring me your project and I say, wait a minute, let me get my phone. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I actually have one that says YouTube certified aircraft mechanic. All right. Well, I guess that's it. So let me think. That can't be it. I have more to talk about. Wait a minute. What happened to all my helical stuff? It's gone. Yeah. That's right. It's on the test. I don't care. That's my problem for tomorrow. It's here somewhere. It's all right. So tomorrow we'll talk about helicoils. I don't have a lot of notes for, for that kind of stuff, but we'll talk about it. So. No, there's no test tomorrow. The test is on, uh, wait a minute, let me just double check. Oh, actually, yeah, because we can do the test tomorrow. Yeah, so we'll do a test tomorrow. That was, that was it. That's all I got for this segment. No, I'll put that in the next one. Oh, okay. There is a test tomorrow.